All right. So hey everyone, my name's Joseph from Trail Features, and I'm Eric from No Front Brakes. And we just had an awesome ride on uh, Walnut Creek. Uh, this guy definitely made me work for it. I I had to really work to keep up. I'm impressed, man. I didn't have a 25 pound pack on though. Yeah. So that that man, I don't know how you do some of those climbs, even the small climbs with the 25 pound pack. So, I mean, like sometimes I don't. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that I'll have to walk when I have the pack on, and then I'll, you know, take off the pack and then film myself and make myself look yeah. really awesome. <laughs> but. My question to you is, what what originally drew you to mountain biking? Uh, well, it started when I was like 16, 15 or 16. I had two, uh, two friends, Tyler and Greg. Still, uh, I still talk to Tyler every now and then. Uh, but we, they got into mountain biking and got me in as a result. Uh, and we literally just went into the woods. Uh, there was some like greenbelt type area behind the development that they lived in. They both lived in the same development. And we went back in the woods with a machete and just like hacked the crap out of stuff. And like, cause there was a trail there, but it was really overgrown. And uh, we basically built a little loop. Kind of, we had no idea what, what berms were then. I mean, it was 1996. So we just, we knew that when we came down around a corner that there needed to be some dirt there. So we would like get a, bring a shovel back and so that's how I got into it. And then from there, we would just like, and, and I mean, before before any of us could drive, we would just go crazy with it and like ride 20 miles to the trails, go ride the trails and then ride home. And I couldn't do that now, I don't think. Yeah. But that's what got me into it. And, and, and I think I've explained this before, but like I, when I went away to college and that was like the primary focus of my life, I kind of just fell out of it until fast forward 15, 20 years. And, yeah. I mean, like, there's two really awesome things there. I mean, first off, like, uh, when we were out on the trails, we were talking about a bunch of stuff. One of the things that I mentioned was, uh, for anyone who wants to meet people to go riding with, even if you literally just bought your first mountain bike, the best thing you can do is go find uh, a trail build day and go volunteer your time. I guarantee you're going to make a ton of friends. They're going to invite you out to go ride and you're going to meet all these awesome people. And I mean, the second thing is it's really awesome that like you guys just went out and built your own trails. Mm -hmm. Like you just found a stretch of unused land and you, you did everything. And I'm like, you know, this is before YouTube and the internet, you didn't have a frame of reference. You just figured yeah. it out. We just knew where we wanted to ride through and yeah hacked our way through it until it was rideable and and when you're a kid you know you it's it's rinse and repeat right so like you're like you're just riding the same stuff over and over and i think there's also some sort of pride involved when you actually made it rideable you're right like there's some like good feeling of ownership so yeah I, to echo you i uh, it's something that I've been bad about actually is coming out the trail building days. Like I, I ride the crap out of walnut and, and brushy and stuff, and I, I need to, I need to make it out. I'm bad about it too, just because you know when you got, I mean you've got a wife and kid, yeah, uh, and then I I go to school part time as well. I've just been on summer break for a while. I took a took a semester off to get some things uh, accomplished in my life, but as soon as classes start back up. You know, it's going to be hard to find ri or riding time and time to go trail build yeah. and everything else. Yeah. But, um, so I mean, like, for you, it sounds like, I, I was going to ask, like, did you ever feel like riding, there was like this insurmountable challenge to riding, or you just got on a bike and did it? Uh, I just did it, like, you know how you are with your friends growing up and, like, all of your friends, like, everybody picks on everybody when yeah. you're all friends. And so I knew that, like that was going to happen when I started to ride. And I knew that they were gonna like gripe about me being slow or whatever at first. Although, you know, I, I was on the swim team in high school and stuff, so, and I, I played soccer and so, You've I was kind of really... already kind of fit yeah. then. I'm, I was definitely more fit than I am now. <laughs> um, beer catches up to you. Yeah, yeah, beer and desks. Yeah, getting a desk job <laughs> just kills your childhood. It's true. 
Uh, but yeah, I knew I knew it was gonna be the, like they were gonna razz me no matter what. So I just did it, just went for it. And I, you know, I hate doing the like whole adversity angle, but like it, it's if you think about things that are gonna that are going to your own limitations are gonna stop you from doing something that you really want to do, then you've already lost that battle. Exactly. I mean, uh, you know, I, I'm sure that. There, there are people out there that view what you're doing, going, "Wow, that's awesome!" I mean, like, you know, it, it doesn't, it doesn't even phase you, because, like, like <laughs> I said, that's I so was bad. out there chasing you. That's what I know. <laughs> and so, you know, it's there's a, a lot of great stories out there, and, and yours is definitely one of them. Of just, just, you just picked up a bike and just started, and that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, I mean, it's it's, and it's not like I had to like I wasn't in like any sort of accident to begin with so like it's just the way I've I mean I learned I I remember my parents uh, when I went to kindergarten my parents were like super worried that I would like have to wait another year because I couldn't tie my shoes and stuff and so I like had velcro shoes until like third grade <laughs> um, but yeah it's not like and I've ever known any difference so I do it I mean I understand why people like you know when, when people like say things like that and I'm like whoa like but to me, it's like, that's like the byproduct of me figuring out how to do something. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, that's not, it's not usually my goal, but then I'm like, it's hard for me to think outside of the way I've always been, so. Yeah, no, oh, that's, that's a great attitude to have. Go for it. Dude. Do it. Back surgery. Oh. oh. Trying Ugh. to get used to mountain biking again. Yeah. I, I know that feeling. I can't say anything to you. How the fuck <laughs> do you do it, man? Uh. I wanted to ask you a question about your prosthetic. Yep. Um, the uh, Chumba guys, how did they reach out to you? Uh, so there's a guy on a local message board, uh, Leaf, aka Spice Wookie. Uh, he builds out, uh, he builds a lot at uh, Pace Bend. Um, but he knows them, and uh, as soon as I started my channel, he started reaching out to me and said, "You need to talk to these guys. You need to talk to these guys." So I had I wanted to make sure I did my due diligence, not put all my eggs in one basket, and not count on Chumba to swoop in and save the day. So uh, I went to a couple other places, uh, kind of did like free consultations, and kind of got the idea of what it was going to cost me in the end. Even if like my insurance covered 80 and I was covering 20, and I was still it was still looking at like uh, like probably seven or eight G's. <laughs> and that's that's only covering 20 percent. that's a yeti <laughs> yeah uh, yeah exactly or a bronson yep so i uh i i called aaron set up a ride at a uh, pace bend and we went out there and i was figuring at the end of the ride i wanted to like kind of foster that relationship and you know get to know them really well before like trying to cross that bridge but by the end of the ride aaron said all right so when are you going to come out and like get fitted and i was like what? oh yeah okay this is happening so we did that. We've done two appointments. Uh, just uh, rode yesterday with the second prototype, and it's it's a keeper. So he's building out the final one. So it's happening pretty quick. I should have it in like a week and a half. I'm super excited to be able to wheelie, be able to uh, hit some gnarly jumps, and keep my bars straight, yeah. land them. I see. I can hit the jump and go up in the air, but coming back down, hitting the ground is the sketch yeah I mean like you know I, I've already been impressed with just like how hard you ride because I I had to really push to keep up and it's gonna be crazy like watching you be able to just accelerate your your skill sets being able to have you know all your weight distributed evenly uh, so not major, cocking my shoulder yeah like your I posture everything yeah, that's gonna be hard on hard on your back and yep. like endurance. That's everything. why I like when I bought this bike and I think I bought it in like May or so, um, seat dropper was the one thing that I never anticipated on using that much and I use it all the time and just to keep my back movement changing because if yeah. I ride and I have my shoulder cocked, you know, I'll at the end of ri every ride on my hardtail, my back was killing me. So yeah. I could imagine. So I'm super excited to relearn some things retrain myself how to ride get rid of that I'll be able to get rid of that muscle memory and, and relearn it though pretty
pretty easily. Definitely. I mean, like, it sounds like you have an, or not sounds like, you do have an athletic background. So yeah. you're, you're all about, you know, refining your, your technique over mm -hmm. time. And this is no different. Oh, hello, tree. Up, 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 up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I need to trim down these bars. 800 millimeter. So yeah, so tell me about how you got into uh, filming. Like, was I know that you, you're more of like an IT type guy at, at your your day to day job. So, how did you get into cameras, whether it be video or just stills? Um, it's it was something that I always played around with when I was a kid. Um, way back when I was like, I think I was like nine ish nine ish back in like the, the mid to late 90s um my mom got a, a camcorder for the family it was mm -hmm. like this super discounted eight millimeter uh sony handycam mm -hmm. and i started you know getting interested in that and uh like i started making little short films on the camera and i would just edit basically by just rewinding mm -hmm. pausing and then hitting record where i wanted to make the 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 cut and um what really got me into it after that was my sister Teresa uh, was dating uh, Dave. This is back in high school. She mm -hmm. was dating uh, a guy named Dave, who eventually became her husband. Uh, Dave's dad had a production company. And as, you know, the, the family started to get to know each other, mm -hmm. I started to get to know Dave's dad. And Dave was also getting to cinematography. And so his dad would, you know, kind of show me the ropes on like the the old school dedicated editing systems that like take up a whole room and it's like dedicated hardware, super expensive stuff. And he would just let me play with it, which was great. I had <laughs> no idea what I was doing though, but like he was kind of planting the seeds of like basic editing. Mm -hmm. And um, fast forward a few years later, uh, we got a newer camera that I could hook up via Firewire to a Mac. Uh, and that was the game changer because then I could actually like sit down and edit. So uh, my buddy Paul, who was in the Bellingham video, he um, he and I and a bunch of other friends, we'd go to the skate park and I'd film them. I was a little squid following them around. Yeah. Uh, and they would like pop ollies and do all this stuff. I'd film them, take it back home, edit it, and then like put it on a VHS. Because <laughs> this was before DVDs. Yeah. Uh, and you know, give it to my friends. And that was where I started playing around with the idea of going to college for it. And I eventually, when I got older, I took an editing class in a community college mm -hmm. and I managed to get an internship at a production house. And that was where the dream died. Oh, because really? you know all those stereotypes about like all the drama, the backstabbing, the, the petty, the cattiness? Um, all of it's true. Huh. It is absolutely true, and I hated every second of it. Yeah, I hated every second of it, and I I also had this moment of realizing when I was filming with my friends, I was a very small fish in a very small pond. Yeah, and then suddenly I got into this bigger pond around all these professionals, and I I wasn't that good. Yeah. <laughs> like I had a lot of work to do, and it was really discouraging. And around that time, I started getting really interested in computers. Mm -hmm and the pay as an intern sucked. You got paid $20 per video, unless another intern worked on that. And there were 20 interns. So you like if four it. interns worked on a video, you got $5 for like 10 hours of work. It was insane. Oh. Um, and I just, I just quit the job. I quit editing everything just because it put such a bad taste in my mouth. And then fast forward to like four years ago when I started getting to mountain biking, that was when I discovered like Seth, Brian, Alex, uh, Nate, and then, you know, IFHT, mm -hmm. those, all those guys not only got me motivated to get out on a bike again, but get the cameras out. Mm -hmm. And like, at first I was filming stuff just for myself, like kind of like you were doing, like, you know, I had a private YouTube channel yep. that I would share with friends and family, but I was like really self-conscious. I didn't want to put anything out there. Yeah. And then I decided to do the, the salsa build. And people really liked that. And I was just goofing around with the camera. And so then I decided, like, well, I want to try doing a review. And mm -hmm. I did the Yeti review. And that was when I started getting all the positivity from all the people finding and going, this is really good stuff. You should make more. 
And so I, I kind of got off on a tangent there, but that's how I got into video editing and where I'm at now. So I kind of had a little bit of a leg up, but like I, I was so rusty and I wasn't that good to begin with. Uh, so a lot of the stuff, I have the benefit of standing on the shoulders of giants. Because yeah. whenever I have a question, I go to, I go to Dave or I, I, I go to some of my other friends who are in the, the editing field and I go, what do I do here? Nice I have answer. no idea. And then just YouTube is such an mm -hmm. awesome resource. Mm -hmm. Now that we're like rested, we have a little rest. Yeah, and I always like to drop gear. <laughs> That's the best part. It's like dropping gear and like, I feel so much lighter. <laughs> it's, it's amazing how much you can keep up with that pack on. And so, <laughs> I'm serious, like, it, like. It's good training, man. If you uh. put like, a, imagine wearing your like camelback and putting like a plate, like an actual like weight plate in the back and then just riding around with it. I'm sure it, like, it's pretty tough and and so like and other people don't think anything of it so they just ride like I was doing it today where I'd be like oh crap oh that's right like making a mental note like hey he's got expensive heavy equipment in his bag I probably shouldn't just burn through this um I appreciate that but the thing is is that you'd be amazed how burly that backpack is oh, oh. there's that tripod reminding me it's there oh is that what it caught it? yeah Manfrotto makes some great tripod gear though. I actually enjoy the challenge of like taking 25 pounds and putting it on your back brings your center of gravity really high up. Mm -hmm. And so you have to, you basically have to learn how to ride the bike twice. Cause as soon as I take the pack off, my center of gravity is lower again. <laughs> and then my suspension is kind of set up a little bit more firm yeah. to compensate for the extra 25 pounds. So suddenly, you know, my shocks are really stiff and <laughs> I need to be able to compensate for that. So everything is kind of a compromise, but it's a fun challenge and it's always worth it at the end of the day when I take the footage home, I get to review mm -hmm. it and I go, oh man, that came out awesome. Yeah, I, and I never, the, another thing, like I feel like I've learned a bunch today. Like I've never considered, I just strap on my GoPro and go and only recently have I been like actually thinking about where I can stop, place my phone, which, you know, it gets out, it does decent, or just take off the, the harness and put the, just taking a little break. But there is a lot involved with actually like setting up a tripod, setting up your camera, you know, uh, balancing the light, and then putting a lens cover on, putting a yeah. like little microphone with a little levelier thing on it. Like there's a lot that goes into it. Like, so I, I appreciate uh, a lot more people that uh, do the stop and go type filming, sessioning filming. It, it's definitely a labor of love. And one of the things that I would like to mention is that, you know, it, it's going to sound a little bit hypocritical for me because, you know, you, I have a GH5 and, you know, all this gear, but I'm really adamant to people when they ask, what do I need to get started? And I say, you, you have it. You have a phone. If you have a GoPro, great. But I've seen some amazing stuff done on the most mundane equipment. Challenging yourself with a, a tiny cell phone makes you think more about the actual shot than yeah. fiddling with settings. Like, oh, gotcha. I, I need to make sure that my color balance is like, no, just focus on what's happening in frame. Yeah. Everything else is secondary. Yeah. Uh, so and, yeah. And viewers, that's what they care about anyway. Exactly. I mean, like, no one cares that I filmed something at 10 bit. Yeah. Like, most people don't even uh, like really care to know what that is, and nor should they, because at the end of the day, if they're enjoying what the content is, yeah. that's the big thing. So, yep. yeah. Yeah, I was really impressed when I found you on, uh, on YouTube, and uh, I think you might have followed me, and then when I did, a, I followed back, and I was like, <laughs> wow, like, there's, like, someone locally that has, like, really great production, because that was one of the things that got me into filming here, is that... I would ride by myself a lot or with a small group of people and we had no idea where we were going um, and, and you see all these epic rides that are like in Colorado or Whistler but there is so much single track here oh yeah and and, and there aren't that many people that are doing filming like normal rides like this 
so I wanted to make sure that I got footage out there for myself and for other people. And then, and then once I remembered that I only have one hand, I'm like, oh yeah, it's probably a pretty good story too. So that was <laughs> that was just a byproduct, and of course, you know, that was a thing that you know, that's one of the the main main selling points of my channel. So well, I mean, like it's once again, it's so awesome that like that was the after. Like, yeah. you, you literally just wanted to go and ride. That was the main objective. And you're like, oh, yeah, and then, like, there's this other thing. I should thing. probably talk about this. Yeah, like, uh, you know, whatever. But, it's no thing. But, yeah, I saw your Barton Creek footage, and I was like, this looks, this is, like, actual, like, movie reel type. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. there's a big bump in production level when, when you're thinking about, like, your sessions and timing it and film and getting the right angle, getting yeah. the right shots, and then putting it all together in a compact video versus like you know just like a gimbal film chess cam which looks good and you know in its own right yeah. but like there there it when it becomes actually about like the film the film itself when that's compounded on top of like the writing so and i mean like like you said there's nothing wrong with the the chess stuff i mean obviously alex and brian have been doing pretty yeah. good with that stuff <laughs> Um, it's it's all about finding your style. I yeah. mean, uh, I borrow from other other creative people. Uh, you know, I have a lot of influences in my life, and so I I try to take that and then put my own flavor on it. You know, you you first you imitate to learn how to do it, and then you adapt. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of what I'm doing. And you know, each video is like I'm tweaking things a little bit more, and it's 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 fun to like go back and even just like two or three videos ago see what I've done differently yeah and I'm like I'm sure some of your videos you're already starting to notice like you know you're you're editing a little bit more differently and you know yeah. your dialogues a little different so it's just fun to go through that process and, and learn different things about yourself I think you grow like everybody usually when they're getting into it grossly underestimates the amount of time that you spend editing so. oh god yes uh, I'm I'm really slow with editing I'll <laughs> it it was one of the things when I worked at the production house that I realized I sucked at. There are people that could just, without thought, just edit this amazing clip together. And, like, they could not be more bored with it. And I would spend a whole afternoon just agonizing over where yeah. I should, like, splice that frame. Uh, and so I, I've actually had to get rid of some bad habits in the editing room. Uh, otherwise, I drive myself crazy. Yeah. And it's funny, too, because, like, people don't see... Like they see the end product, but they don't see the pre the dozen attempts of like oh, one God. one three sentence voiceover that I take to put on there. Mm -hmm. Like it's it's pretty it can be pretty grueling. But in the end, once once you hit that hundred percent upload and you got your 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 title and your t and your description tags in there, then you're like, oh. and once it's out there, it feels so good. And that's one thing I'll, I'll mention something about that. Um, if you are trying to strive for perfection, you're never going to find it. Yeah. You, sometimes you just have to go, that's good enough, render, publish, I'm done, mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to go have a beer now. What else are you looking to do to the bike? Um, well, I'm looking for a really good brake solution. Uh, I'll keep my channel name, obviously, but I'd yeah. like to be able to use front brakes. So I don't want to combine them. I know that you can splice them together into one pool. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to keep it separate, whether that's like, whether they're stacked or there's a longer one and a shorter one. Um, but I'd like to be able to, you know, even even just like watching uh, Brian Kennedy's like uh, in, in Italy, his ride, mm -hmm. who, his tour guide kept on doing that and Brian was working on it where you would come in, be going downhill, come to a switch, do an endo, flip your tail around, and yeah. then ride off. And I couldn't do that. There's no way. And so I'd love to be able to stack my brakes, make it so that I can uh, endo or pull them separately instead of always having it be like a 60-40. Yeah. Right front. And I know that you you mentioned that uh, Chumba is is trying to help you. Yeah, out I need to. I, I need to talk. I know. I, I mean, once I have the prosthetic, there's still a lot of more. I mean, it's basically optimization at that point, right? Yeah. Uh, I definitely need to figure out if I can move my one by to the my shifter to the right uh, and figure out how to shift a little more. 
fluidly because that's going to be pretty tough because yeah. now instead of being able to just like shift or pull shift and put and get back on i'm going to have like a you know i'm going to yeah. have to go up and over the the little pull that will be on my bar so yeah if i could flip that over and somehow still keep my dropper post and then do tool breaks i mean obviously it won't be balanced uh visually but i'd love to be able to take care of all that over here yeah i like I'm sure the, the guys at Chumba are way smarter than me. My initial thought is like, you know, maybe like a grip shift or something like yeah. that. And just like, you know, usually it's over on this side, but literally just flipping it around would probably accomplish the same thing. You would just turn it the opposite way, Yeah. which whatever, that'll yeah. take like one or two rides to learn and then you're good. I mean, I definitely like the, the lever because I think like two full pushes through it will get me the whole way through all of my gears. So I like that, but you know, maybe it wouldn't be that too bad to be able to just like mm, yeah. mm, go back out. Maybe, maybe if there's someone out there from SRAM or Shimano, maybe, oh, yeah. maybe R and D up something a little bit because, you know, I, I bet you there's other people that could utilize that. For sure. You know, other people who maybe have, you know, other limited use of their, their hand through like yeah. maybe an accident, maybe they have, you know, numbness, so they don't have good reflexes so yeah. it might be nice to have it over there so and if anybody know. has an idea uh leave it in the comments because we'll yeah for sure look at those definitely yeah uh i'm i'm not the smartest person in the world so i'm definitely definitely interested to see what other people have for ideas uh because all of us together definitely can do a lot of good uh as proven in the past so dream bike uh, right now, I kind of, I really want to ride the Tryout and Evil Reckoning. Um, I've been wanting to get my hands on an Evil. Evil needs to come down here with the yeah. demo car. Come on, guys. I don't know. There's a whole lot of, I mean, obviously, like, the YT, Intense, both, and, and Evil have both been getting a lot of, a lot more visibility. There's definitely a lot of hype behind those brands. Um. Oh, I'd like to try riding a Bronson, something like that, something a little, a little more squishy. Um, I mean, I'm super happy with my high tower, honestly. That oh, was yeah. that was my that set the bar for for whatever my next dream bike would or could be. I rode so um, when I was picking out the Yeti, I rode tons of bikes. I rode Santa Cruz high tower, uh, salsa pony rustler. Uh, Trek Stash and a few others. Um, I can't even remember them all now. But the high tower was really interesting because the personality differences between the Yeti and the high tower, the way I can explain it is the high tower just gives you this nice sense of calm. Just like the bike just reassures mm -hmm. you, you got this man, go ahead, just huck it, it'll be fine. The Yeti, on the other hand, is like, hey, check out that super sketchy line. Let's hit that. That's yeah. the one I want to hit. Uh, so, like, that's the personality difference. And I liked both because this is more playful, but this is just something that you can ride all day and just know that the bike can take anything you can yeah. throw at it. Yeah. Um, my dream bike right now, I would love to get a more enduro-style bike because mm -hmm. I find myself getting more and more aggressive on the downs. Uh, I know I'm paying a penalty in the climbs, but like a 5.5, five, just a ridiculously long travel bike, just meant to Some meant crazy to geometry. Yeah, exactly. 5.5, uh, five, five, I think, is um, right now my dream bike, but custom built. Um, I find myself liking the Rock Shocks more than the fox and i know i'm gonna get some thumbs down <laughs> in the comments for that uh because you know branding is always uh is always a touchy subject but so yeah dream bike right now would probably be a custom build 5.5 five. um i haven't been on an evil yet so i i can't compare yeah. it to like the reckoning or something like that but those look like awesome bikes too jeff c would be fun to ride the yt jeff c oh yeah uh, i i mean there's just there's just no there's bad so bikes, bikes anymore. I There's know. no such thing as a bad bike. Uh, I know everyone's going to say Walmart bikes are bad bikes, but you know what? If that's if that's within your means to get, there's nothing wrong with that. Just get out on a bike and ride. I mean, yeah. like we're definitely talking first world problems here. 
uh, you know, like, oh, which, which... Yeah, don't don't let a $400, $400 barrier uh, bar you from riding. Yeah, just get out there and ride. Do uh, what you can do. As you get better, you're going to want yeah. a better bike. You know, That's things are going to open up, and there's nothing wrong with getting a second-hand, uh, you know, mid, mid-2000s mid bike. Yeah. If, if that means that you can get a nice hardtail that has been well cared for, uh, and get out there and ride on that, that's just as good. Yeah. So if it's got two wheels and it shifts good, just get out there and have fun. Um, so yeah, you got that's, any more questions? Nah, it's gonna do it for me. Awesome, all right, man. Well, Eric, it's been it's been an awesome time hanging out. Yeah. And I I definitely am, am impressed. I, I can't wait to see where you're gonna go from here. Uh, how you're gonna evolve, where the, your channel's going. It's gonna be so much fun to watch. Thanks, and same, same. I mean, it's been, a, it's been a fun ride today. I look forward to riding with you in the future. Really look forward, to, like, to your uploads, honestly. Like, <laughs> yeah, like in the future, your, your, your uploads will be ones that, like, you know, your computer tells you throughout the day when someone doesn't upload, and so you, you'll, you'll be the video. You'll be in there with, like, the Seths and Alex and, and Brian, oh, man. so. Yeah, yeah. You're, I'm just you're saying the, you're putting the pressure on really, me, man. Really good footage, and uh, you know it's really cool to see like production and how that how that comes out in the end, like how that ends up in in the video and, and the difference that it makes. So awesome. So once again, this is Eric from No Front Breaks. If you aren't already subscribed, go subscribe right now. And uh, yeah, do the same. Subscribe to Trail Features, and uh, yeah, look forward to those high production, great videos. Definitely, man. All right, make sure to uh, subscribe, like, share, and leave your comments below. We'd really like to hear from you all, see what uh, what ideas you have to, to help Eric out, get his bike dialed in right, and uh, ideas for, for films to do in the future. Uh, we're always up for new ideas coming in from you guys, see what you want to you want to watch. So thanks again. See you next time. See ya. Cool. All right. Uh.